Okay, let's um let's bring in some data from Excel and then we're gonna we're gonna display it. Okay, so I'm gonna do a file, new project, and this will be an example of um reading a file reading a file from Excel. Okay, so I'm going to click OK on that. And um, nothing too exciting. We're going to have um, let's see, a list box. There it is. <clears throat> and when, currently when I click a file, I want it to load this in. Or click a button, I mean. So I click a button, and it's going to load it in. So I need to name the list box, call it L box. L box, uh, call it numbers. And this button, I'm gonna have it say load. Okay, now let me say this. We're going to look at better ways of figuring out uh, where to store the file out and how to retrieve it. Um, but let me bring up Excel. And I'll have some numbers that'll load in. So I got uh, 112.33, I'm going to do a file, save as. And here's the important part. I'll choose computer, browse. Um, that might look different on your computer, but uh, we want to um, locate. I go into uh, documents. Visual Studio 2015. Uh, let's try it again. Documents up here. I'm not sure what in the world I was in down there. And um, let me see, 2015 projects. The one I just created was example reading a file from Excel. Uh, example reading a file from Excel, bin I believe, and then debug. So we'll save it here. And I'm going to say save as type, comma delimited. And I'll call this numbers.csv. Okay, now let's just click uh, save. And some features, do you want to keep using that format? Yes, I'm going to close this. So I'm going to do a file close uh, do I save it? yes okay mm, do I keep using this format yes okay now if I go to that folder so I'm going up here to my documents Visual Studio 2015 uh, projects um, example reading a file from from Excel and keep going down to the bin, to the debug, to this. Okay. I'm going to right click on that and I want to say open with notepad. This is what the file looks like. Typically, if we have more than one column, you'd have commas between your data. Uh, we're not going to take a look at uh, anything that complex right now. That'll come in later on uh, when we figure out uh, how to access a file that's comma, comma sep separated by commas. Okay, so over my code here then, I'll double click this. Now we're going to need to bring in the, the using system dot input output IO. Okay, that'll bring in our libraries. So then down here in our button click, um, before we did a stream writer, if I start typing stream, you see there's also a stream reader. And I'll call it IF for input file. 
Now IF, and add in like something there. Type which is not valid in the given context. Um, oh, if. Huh. I file, let's say. Huh, if. You can't put, use reserve words like that. Okay. I was wondering. It's a pretty simple program. Uh, okay, we'll do an I file equals file dot. And before we did a create text when we created a file, but if you scroll down, you see there's an open text. Uh, so if we open the text and then we give it a file name. Now this has to be whatever we called it. Remember over here we called it numbers.csv. Okay, so I'll come over here, numbers.csv. That'll open our file. Now, if we want to loop through, we have to know how many um, rows we're going to have. Well, obviously, we're not going to know exactly how many rows we, we have in the file. You might have three, which I think we have, or you might have uh, 15. So we need to program this such that it, it handles that. So we do a while, um, and then our the exclamation there I file dot end of stream and then our braces okay let's let's interpret this of course I file is our input file that we just opened end of stream that's saying is it the end of the file and when you put the exclamation in front of it this is what says while not end of file we're gonna go through and do this so this is going to keep on looping through our, our file until we, we've brought everything in. So we're going to have our list box. So we'll do lbox numbers dot items dot add. And I'm going to be adding what I'm, what I'm bringing in. So I'm going to say l file dot read line. And I think this will work. We'll see. Okay, now I better have it as a separate variable, I guess. I thought I didn't need to do that. String, let's say s. So s is going to equal to i file dot. Um, and we're going to read the line. So I do read line. And then I'll add it to my list box with the s. Oops. Now I have to make sure I close my file. In some cases you don't need to do it, but it's always good programming practice to close it. Sometimes it does weird things if you don't close it. Okay, so let's run this. And I click my button and it brings in those three numbers. Well, now if I come over here to Excel and I open up that file, and I put in some more numbers, 205.44311.49. It should still be a CSV file, so if I save it, it'll ask, do you want to keep using this format? Yes. And uh, you want to make sure you close it. So I'll do a file close. I'm not sure why it asked me that again. I suppose just because it's not typical format. Now if I run this, if I click the load, see it now puts the two new numbers in there. So this is communicating with Excel. Problem with this? If I come over here and open the file, and I'm not sure if it'll cause me a problem here, but a lot of times when you got the file open in another application and you try to run a file against it, if I click load, you see it breaks it. Uh, un unhandled exception. Um, process cannot access the file because it's being used by another process. So that wasn't too bad of an error message to tell us what was wrong. Um, the book uh, gives you examples where you're doing um, you got your try and your catch exception in there to handle handling those errors. Um, and you can put that, definitely put that in there. But you can see the problem with working with a flat file. Uh, it can break real easy. I could also come over here and um, put something in this this uh, line. 
Now it's still going to work, so don't think that it won't. Well, I, I'm assuming it will. <laughs> Famous last words. Because it's just bring bring that all that in as one big um, line of text. Um, but now when I run this, see if I'm lying to you. If I click load, see how it puts the dot or the comma, G H I in there. Um, actually, it's putting commas behind all of those, isn't it? Um, I think that's comma. It's pretty small. Let me change the font of that. To Twenty. And uh, let's try to run it again. See if I can see what in the world that uh, looks like. Ah, they are commas. Because remember, it's a comma-separated file. I didn't even notice that when we brought up in Notepad. But if I come over here, and if I do open with Notepad, ah, sure enough, there was commas in there. Unless those commas appeared when I put the second, this GHI in there. That I'm not sure about. Uh, let me go over to Excel. Open that file. delete that and let's save that let's see if it actually deleted it or it'll put leave the comma there thinking there's some other data over there so I'll right click on this and choose open with notepad ah the comma's gone so um, good I was ho I hope to hope to would do that but I wouldn't I wasn't sure now we're going to expand upon this example where we have a little bit more user-friendly way of loading in the file such that we don't have to have it saved in that uh, strange location we can save it anywhere um, but that'll be in the second part of this